There's nothing like flowering shrubs to brighten your garden. Look at these wonderful bougainvilleas. And here are some hibiscus. They're looking so happy, so healthy, moving in the wind. But actually, the clip you're seeing on the screen was taken in our first hibiscus video, which was done eight months ago. And that video is called How to Propagate Hibiscus by Air Layering and Stem Cuttings. Imagine my surprise three months after we did that video on one of my observation tour. Look what I saw. I really wasn't happy with this. And what is this? This is the dreaded hibiscus mite. And if you want to know first how to identify it, if you've seen it in your garden and what to do to control it, please keep watching. Thanks for staying and welcome to the Calix Services Garden. I am Thelma and if you, this is your first visit in our garden, please, we invite you to stay a while and after you've watched this video, we suggest that you watch some of our more than 100 videos we've done so far on how to take care of tropical plants. No. So now it's time to look at hibiscus and hibiscus mite. The hibiscus mite is a really tiny microscopic pest and it seems to have a great liking for hibiscus. And if you're not careful, if you don't observe it in time and it gets out of hand, it can destroy your entire hibiscus plants and it may even spread to other hibiscus plants in your neighborhood. So it's very important that we keep a close look on our hibiscus and make sure we detect the signs early. And this is what, these are the telltale signs of the hibiscus mites. Now you cannot see this particular mite with the naked eye. It is so small that you need a microscope to see it. It has a special liking for hibiscus, and that's why it's commonly known as the hibiscus mite. It can be present for some time, quietly feeding on the buds and the younger leaves, weakening the plant before you notice the telltale bumps or galls on the leaves. As the attack continues, leaves get very deformed and cluster together, which severely limits their ability to continue to produce food to keep the plant alive. Now, symptoms can also occur on buds, flowers, and small branches, but typically you see them on the younger leaves. Once a mite is in a plant, it essentially stays there, and it is spread primarily through the use of infected planting materials. So be careful how you handle one plant, take it to the next. You can be spreading the infection in your garden. And once you see one plant with this mite, check your other plants. Chances are they're also affected. Unfortunately, this was the case with all five plants. Now, the main control method, the main way to control this mite is to remove the infected plant materials. I started with the pink hibiscus variety because there were relatively few stems affected on this plant. I cut off the few infected stems, placed them in a plastic bag, closed the lid tightly, and left it in the sun for a few days, five to seven days. And this is one of the recommended ways to get rid of the mites. The other trees were much larger and had a much more serious level of infestation. So Don decided to help me out. And we decided that we were going to use the opportunity to prune these trees severely for two reasons. One, to remove the mites, and two, so that they will regrow into a much shorter, more compact shape. So this is done in action. Thanks, Don. 
Let me show you what the plants look like six months after the pruning. They've all leafed out very nicely. There are lots of buds. They resumed blooming. And I'm sure you'll agree that these shorter plants are much more attractive, don't you think? We place all of the trimmings in a plastic bag, closed it tightly, as I said before, and left them in the sun. The first week after the pruning, we apply the bioneem, not only on the hibiscus, but on all the plants that are in the bed. And we followed up the first bioneem application three weeks later with a second application. That really is all the chemical application I'm recommending. There are other uh, pesticides that can be used, but in the garden, the bioneem gives adequate control. Thereafter, we allow the natural predators to do what they do best. And in the week since that pruning, I've kept a closer eye on the hibiscus and we, I have yet to see any more symptoms. So give thanks. The natural predators did do what we were hoping that they would do. They kept the hibiscus mite under control. And there you have it, our experience battling the hibiscus mite. So if you see those pustules on your hibiscus, do not wait until they get out of hand. Please remove them as soon as possible. Take them out of your garden, dispose of them properly. Do not put them in your compost heap. Put them, we recommend, in the plastic bag. And to control the mite in the early stages after pruning, we recommend that you apply an insecticide or pesticide treatment. And the safest one for the garden that we use is the bioneem. We hope you found the information interesting and useful to you. And if you did, please give us a thumbs up, share it with your friends. And if you haven't subscribed already, please, we're asking you to do so. So until the next video, I am Thelma in the Calyx Garden saying thanks for watching. Take care. Bye-bye.